Hi there and welcome to this week's golf equipment q and I'm Valerie Melvin here with Frank Thomas and we're at the putting pad at Reunion Resort in Orlando, Florida so hop along for a putting lesson. This week we're going to be talking about an excerpt from Dear Frank, our fabulous book which contains a hundred of our best Q&As and this question from Jim particularly stood out because he asked Frank about the effect that wind has on the golf ball and it's kind of amusing because he says, you know, you maybe watch golf on TV and the ball will come up short and, you know, the announcer will say, oh, a breeze came up there and, you know, is it a one club breeze, a two club breeze? You know, and Jim's comment was, you know, surely we can do better than that. My goodness, we went to the moon. <laughs> um, what do you think, Frank? Yeah. Uh, Jim, uh, you know, uh, on the moon, you don't have to worry about the wind effect. When Alan Shepard did his uh, shot on the moon, that iron shot, and he stuck the head on the end of a, of, a, of a little rod that was used to pick up samples of dust, moon dust, and, and uh, uh, he, he hit his shot, but he didn't have to worry about the wind because there isn't any air up there to worry about. <laughs> so, uh, the other thing is, uh, uh, Jim, is that when Alan Shepard uh, uh, donated that club to the USGA, he and I were huddled under, a, under an umbrella in a rainstorm and he said to me, he said, Frank, uh, you know, did, did this club conform with the rules? And I told him that the rules don't apply on the moon. <laughs> um, outside of that, uh, Jim, um, there is a sort of a general rule of thumb when it comes to, to wind. Uh, let's just take, for example, a 250-yard drive. A headwind will always hurt you more than a tailwind will help. A tailwind of about 10 miles an hour will help you about 9 yards. A headwind will hurt you about 13 yards. But that's dependent on the actual wind that the, uh, that the ball sees. When you throw up a little bit of uh, grass in the air, you're only finding out what the wind effects are right where you are, not where the ball sees it. And, and uh, as soon as you get the trees and everything else, you get turbulence and eddies. And, and, and there's an example of, of the, the, the 12th hole at Augusta and or the 17th hole at the TPC where, where the wind have, has eddies and the ball may be launched at one condition but when it gets up there it may be a different condition and that's one of the reasons why the golfers have such a, 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 a you know a, a trouble on, on that particular green they can't read exactly what the wind that is doing so look at the top of the trees or look at the flag on the bottom of the blimp if you get a blimp following your foursome, just look at the flag on the bottom of the blimp. Otherwise, just look at the top of the trees. And when you're out in the open, you can actually have, you may be able to throw some uh, of, uh, grass in the air and find out. But uh, it'll hurt you more into the wind than it'll help you with the wind. Good stuff, Frank, especially for Lynx golf. That's really, really important stuff. R right. Well, listen, thanks for that this week. We'll be back in touch next week. But until then, may the frog be with you.